so begins the 2006 Accenture Escape from Alcatraz Triathlon. Past the rust red peaks of the Golden Gate Bridge, below the ethereal fog, isolated in the middle of San Francisco Bay, lies Alcatraz Island, the home of the infamous penitentiary once thought inescapable has now become the starting point for the world's most notorious triathlon. Covering over 27 miles, people from all corners of the globe converge today on this spot only in an attempt to escape in the 2006 Accenture Escape from Alcatraz Triathlon. Escape from Alcatraz Triathlon as we welcome you to the city by the bay. And I'll tell you what, we are on deck the Hornblower. Normally it's a cruise ship, nice dinner, cruising the bay, but today it's a different kind of three-course meal and we start off with the water. Well, the key to the swim for the athletes is who handles the three C's the best. Number one C is the chaos that's inherent in every triathlon swim, especially this one. Also the cold. That is 55 degree water the athletes are swimming in and also the current. You try to outswim Mother Ocean, you're in for a long day, Todd. Survive the one and a half mile swim and you're on your bike 18 miles, but this is no flat ride. 18 miles doesn't sound like a long ride, and it's not, except there's no flats in this course to speak of. Just a lot of diabolical climbs and very, very steep descents. The key for the athletes to be aggressive and alert. Two courses down, and now you're onto the run. Beautiful Baker Beach, but it is grueling. Very grueling. To call it an eight mile run is to damn it with faint praise. It's more like a, a survival trek, something that you would find in a Navy SEAL training manual. We are underway. Right now, let's check in with the third member of our broadcast team. Here's Annabelle Bond. Guys, this is the transition area. No one thinks how important the transition is to a triathlon, except the athletes themselves. They know how important it is in here. Races can be won and lost. The athletes have come out of the water, which is freezing cold. Their hands and feet are going to be numb. They've got to come in here. They've got to find their bikes out of the hundreds of bikes, get changed, and get out of here as fast as possible. Now, if the race is close, which it normally is in the first transition period, one slight mistake can cause valuable seconds. Thanks, Annabelle. As you know, we're in the city by the bay, San Francisco, and as we just saw, the race starts just south of Alcatraz Island. The swim is a 1.5-mile trek to the beach just north of Chrissy Field. From there, it's an 18-mile bike ride starting at the Maria Green, out to the Great Highway, and back, an extremely hilly course. Once back at the Marina Green, it's an eight-mile run, four miles out to Baker Beach, four miles back. And as you'll see, this is not your typical triathlon. Over 1,700 athletes have begun their escape already, and it only takes a little over eight minutes for all of them to get in the water. The leader right now is American Andy Potts. He is followed by 2004 escape champion Great Britain's Simon Lessing, and then the rest of the pack. Todd, this is pretty much expected, handicapping the field beforehand. I think all the pros figured that Andy Potts would take the lead. He's such a good swimmer, and then they would fall in right behind him. One of the things that you want to do in this race is get away from Alcatraz as quickly as possible because there is an eddy that runs around it. And if you get stuck in that, you can get off to a slow start. But Potts looking great. Easier said than done, and there we see not far from the men's lead is the women's leader, American Sarah McClarty. She's known to be a good swimmer, Mike. She's showing it right now. An All-American at the University of Florida. She was in an ITU race last year, Todd, in Japan, and actually beat everybody, including the men in the swim. That's how good she is. Sarah McClarty fighting the men, fighting Mother Nature, and fighting the chop today in San Francisco Bay. Simon Lessing is right on the heels of Andy Potts, and I'm sure Andy Potts can just feel him bearing down on him. Can't look back in the water, especially when you're in the lead, but Mike, this is Alcatraz, and some of the best triathletes in the world are here trying to reel you in. Andy Potts, USA. Not a lot of people get a chance to do what they love and love what they do at the same time, and I feel very blessed to do so. I had such an outstanding um, time here last year and I decided to come back and maybe hopefully improve on my third place finish. If you can live your dreams, then um, you're living life the way it should be lived. Hunter Kemper, USA. This year, it's a little bit more pressure, being that I did win last year, and I think more of a bullseye on my back. This race has a lot of character, uh, it's very special. 
and uh, it's right in the heart of San Francisco. So it's, it's a race that a lot of the uh, top pros come to because it's so unique, so it's quite a challenge. Matt Reed, USA. This will be my fifth time here. For me, the key is in the swim. If I can come out with uh, the lead guys, uh, which I haven't done in recent years, this is absolutely is key. I have to do that. First year I was seventh, second year I was fifth, and uh, third year I was third, and this year I'm going to win. Hamish hey, Carter, New Zealand. The tough part of the race starts when you dive off the boat, to tell you the truth. You're just thinking, why the hell am I doing this? I've got to get a real job. It's more of an adventure race because it's just there's so many parts to it which are more extreme than your average triathlon. Joanna Zeiger, USA. Anytime you tell people that you're doing this race, they want to know, aren't you afraid of the sharks? There are sharks out there. And you know, there are 2,000 people. My, my odds of getting bit aren't that high. Everybody's heard of Alcatraz. There's a mystique about Alcatraz. And to say that you swum from there, just, you know, it, people just think it's wow. And it's kind of cool. It's just a, it's a fun race. Becky Lavelle, USA. I'd like to um, get up to that number one position. That's been my goal really every time I've come out here. I hope to get a good solid swim in, stay in touch at least with, with the leaders, the lead women out, and um, just give it everything I got on that bike and hold strong on the run. Hope for the best. Laura Bennett, USA. What I like the most about Alcatraz is it's so diverse in all three disciplines. You know, you jump off and honestly you start swimming and you cannot see the land. <laughs> so it's pretty nerve wracking from the get go and the bike's very challenging. And the wind is howling, it's just so much fun. It's just a really exciting race. Samantha McGlone, Canada. Last year was my first time in Alcatraz. I don't think it's one of the races you can ever really be prepared for. It was different than anything I've ever done, but it was one of the coolest races I've ever done. The swim is cold and a little rough. The bike is hilly and hard and beautiful, and the run is just gorgeous along the coastline. It's got a bit of everything, and I love it here. And Todd, this race has become so popular that the only way you can get into it is by qualifying in another race or getting in via the lottery. As we look at Andy Potts, the leader from the United States, he's followed by three-time Alcatraz champion Simon Lessing, and there's Sarah McClarty passing one of the men. This may be McClarty's strongest leg of the triathlon. She is a terrific swimmer, and she is leading the women's competition. So it's Simon Lessing chasing Andy Potts. Lessing currently sitting in second place for the men's lead. And look at this, they've got the beach in their sights. With the swim almost over, the road ahead is full of surprises. The 18-mile bike through the treacherous hills of San Francisco lurks ahead. And then it's the eight-mile run and the daunting sand steps. Keep it right here. The Accenture Escape from Alcatraz Triathlon continues next. Hornblower Cruises and Events, the San Francisco Bell was instrumental in the start of the Accenture Escape from Alcatraz Triathlon. At 7 a.m., over 1,600 triathletes crowded aboard Hornblower's largest vessel as it made its way towards the race's starting point, just off the shore of Alcatraz Island. Ordinarily, this majestic yacht would be pampering guests with delicious food, fine Californian wine, and spectacular views of San Francisco Bay. There's Captain Edward Jerbic of the Hornblower as he looks out at the masses of athletes in the water that have just jumped off his boat. The sight that must be for a captain. Well, I guarantee a Captain Ed has thought about doing this, but he's got an automatic out. A captain never leaves his ship, Todd. No question about it. It's Andy Potts and Simon Lessing making their way onto the beach. And Lessing is right on Potts' heels. Now getting out of the water here, Mike, is a slow go. And if they look a little bit slow, a little bit numb, it's with good reason. Once again, the water temperature, 55 degrees. Longtime Alcatraz swim guru, Joe Oves, who briefs the athletes before every swim, uses a play on scripture verse to describe San Francisco Bay. Many are cold, but few are frozen. I think these two guys would beg to differ. We'll track Andy Potts' split time here in the transition to bike, which starts at the Accenture mat. They both just crossed. Now, you have the option to stop and put your sneakers on here for the run to the transition area, which is close to a mile away. Andy Potts, he's decided not to go with the kicks. Meanwhile, on the pink cap is Sarah McClarty. She is out of the water now, first among the women. She'll head for the transition area. And Mike, she has a sizable lead on the women. She's not too far back from the men's leader. 
And there's 2004 Olympic champion New Zealand's Hamish Carter. He's deciding to wear shoes. There's Sarah McClarty, the first woman in the transition area. What a tremendous swim. But right now, she looks a little disoriented. She can't find her, can't find her sneakers, Todd. Precious time being wasted for Sarah McClarty. She built up a huge lead in the swim, but it is evaporating quickly, and she finally locates her shoes. That could be a costly, costly mistake, but she is on her way. On her heels, there is Joanna Zeiger. She's in second place right now, and she has no idea how much time she has made up on Sarah McClarty. Zeiger also having the problems of locating her shoes. She's not going to bother with Forget it. Forget about it. Off she goes. So up ahead, it's Andy Potts leading the men's race, running barefoot towards the transition area. He is followed closely by Simon Lessing. Mike, that has got to be uncomfortable having an Alcatraz past champion not far behind you, plus running barefoot. Well, one thing that Andy Potts can ill afford to do is worry about the race that's going on behind him. He has to stay within himself and do what he does best. But I guarantee you, he feels Simon Lessing on his heels. Sarah McClarty on her way to the bike area. Looks like she's found a rhythm, Todd. Sarah McClarty on her way to the bike transition area. This is Joanna Zeiger currently in second place, and she looks determined to catch McClarty. That is the eye of the tiger. So it's Andy Potts into the swim to bike transition area first. It's a quick change, lose the wetsuit, grab the helmet. The shoes already clipped in and we'll keep an eye on his Accenture split time here as well. This is something the athletes practice in addition to swimming, biking and running, they work on their transition times. So many races in the past have been won and lost because of good or bad transitions. And there's Matt Reed in the blue and white, and now a host of men are in the transition area. There's last year's champion, Hunter Kemper, in the light blue. Quick change for him. He's followed by Simon Lessing, but there's Craig Alexander sneaking ahead of him for second place. Then Hunter Kemper, and there's Simon Lessing, who, as you can see, 356 in the changeover. He just lost 20 seconds. Andy Potts, 336. Well, after having trouble finding her sneakers, Sarah McClarty, the first woman in the swim bike transition, out of there very quickly, heading for the bike course. Her Accenture split time, 420. Right where she wants to be. That's Laura Bennett on the right in the blue and black. She has made a race of this women's competition. This is Joanna Zeiger. Now she'll start her change, struggling just a little bit there, Mike, with the wetsuit. Laura Bennett, quick to get her helmet on, her wetsuit is off. She's gonna get out in second place. Laura Bennett ranked number one in the world. Keep your eye on Becky Lavelle, also with a very fast change. She'll come out in third place right behind Bennett. And if there's such a thing as a home course advantage, Becky Lavelle has it. She's from nearby Los Gatos. There is Joanna Zeiger making her way out of the transition area. Her time is 4.35, so she gives up 15 seconds to leader McClarty. And now up ahead, last year's champion, Hunter Kemper, leading the chase pack. Craig Alexander is on the left there, and they're both strapping into their cycling shoes the cleats already have fixed and watch out for this man right here Matt Reed from Boulder Colorado he is an absolute beast on the bike Matt Reed sits in second but it's Andy Potts the leader at the beginning of the bike he's got a lot of company behind him can he maintain this lead we'll find out when the Accenture escape from Alcatraz triathlon continues Welcome back to the 2006 Accenture Escape from Alcatraz Triathlon. And you can't stress enough the currents here in the Bay, Mike. And Todd, if the currents don't get you the chop in the cold water, certainly will. You have to remember for a lot of these age group athletes, this is their first time swimming in this kind of open water. They're used to doing their workouts in genteel pools. This is a much different proposition and you can see some of the athletes having to be taken out of the water. As the masses make their way out of the water, it's no surprise almost every one of them is wearing a wetsuit. Whether you're an elite athlete or an amateur, finding a good wetsuit for any type of swimming is essential. Well, Speedos come out with XD skin. 
and it dries fast, it wears fast. It feels like silk on your skin and it won't chafe and it's great for any multi-sport athlete. If you want to look like the pros and race like the pros but not exactly break the bank, an XD skin is definitely your fit. You'll feel comfortable swimming, biking or running in this because it's so light and because it does dry quickly. You can use Speedo's XD skin whether you're competing or training. When you know that the equipment that you have isn't going to fail you because you're comfortable the whole time, it's one less thing that you have to think about while you're out there. It's been tested, it's been proven, and it's been worn that you can take it to the limits. You're going to feel more confident while you're, while you're racing or training. Any way you use it, you're going to get a great performance from it, and it'll last you for as long as your race season's going to take you. If you can escape from Alcatraz and Speedo's XD skin, you can do anything. Mike, wetsuit or not, that water out there just looks downright cold. Well, that's because it is cold. It is not an easy swim by any stretch of the imagination. These people, no question about it, are going to struggle with it. It's a test for them just to fight through it. For some, the swim is the hardest part of all. For others, it's the bike or the run. And for some, the whole day is a test of will and character. June 21st, 2003, I was headed to teach a police academy in the town of Heat, Iraq, and ran over an anti-tank mine. July 20th, 2005. I was serving in Mamadi, Iraq. We were just doing a normal combat patrol. I was the last on V, basically a bomb, and off the vehicle flipped probably three or four times. January of 2005, we were on a routine route clearance mission about 100 meters off the road. Our vehicle struck an anti-tank mine. Uh, and destroyed the right front end of my vehicle and destroyed my right foot. And when the vehicle landed, my foot was one of the first parts to land. Now, I'm lucky to be alive because I was considering half my body's outside of the vehicle. Before I was injured, I really hadn't done anything to help other people. I started to realize that that was my opportunity to reach out and help other people. Challenge Athletes Foundation called me and said, hey Dave, what can we do to help our veterans? What can we do that's different? We came up with Operation Rebound, which is at its core to take care of the veterans long term. We do a number of different things, whether it's coaching, mentorship, or to actually purchase equipment or get people involved in racing and get them out to races like this. Major Rizal approached me while I was still in the wheelchair. Uh, told me that the Challenge Athletes Foundation had an opportunity for me to participate in a triathlon. Triathlon really does represent what our veterans need to do, they need to overcome. It's almost like building back up to where we were to show us that there is something out there. We don't have to sit around and sulk and wait for an opportunity to come to us. Through the Challenge Athletes Foundation and Accenture, now I'm out here and getting ready to uh, take part in my first triathlon. The run's going to be hard, but uh, nothing in life that's worth it isn't. Imagine the compass they're going to have when they leave, escape from Alcatraz, whether it's to swim from the rock or to do these big hills or to do the run in the sand ladder. I hope people that see myself and the other veterans that are here who have been wounded in war understand that if they apply themselves, if they push forward, if they make the most of opportunities that are presented to them, the opportunities are limitless. It's also important for American people to see the, the spirit of the American soldier, the veteran. We're not one to quit, whether it's on the battlefield of Iraq or now that we've been injured. I think we're all here for a purpose. There are no limits for the human spirit. I just, I think that that's really cool if we can inspire anybody in any way. Hi, my name is Kathy Winkler. My name is Maddie Winkler. I'm 40 years old. years old. This is my this sixth is my or seventh Accenture Escape from Alcatraz. Alcatraz. Last year, Maddie decided that she wanted to take on the Accenture Escape from Alcatraz. I was really excited to do it because it would be a big challenge for me. I asked if she really wanted to do it. It's a huge commitment, and she said yes. So last year I did it, and I had a really good time. I was so nervous for her competing. Hearing people just on the boat talking and saying, did you hear there's a 12-year-old girl who's going to be out there doing it, would make my stomach turn. She leaped right off the boat. When I jump off the boat, it's just like, OK, I have to finish this. I, I just need to do it. I had to kind of just focus on myself, knowing there was nothing I could do for her and that she was prepared. My mom is a very encouraging person, and I look up to her. I really wouldn't have been able to do this without her. It made me weepy every time I saw her. She would you know, scream out, hey, mom, I'm over here, and waving. And she looked like she was really enjoying herself, which just, it makes my heart sink. And there is Maddie Winkler, who has made her way into the swim to bike transition area. Mike, I got to tell you, for a 13-year-old, she looks pretty comfortable having just finished the 1.5-mile swim in the Chili Bay. And having an athletic mom as a role model doesn't hurt either. 
Also looking comfortable is men's leader Andy Potts. There he is, who has started his way up through the Presidio where the famous San Francisco fog has rolled in right off the ocean. Normally, these are breathtaking views from here. Well, there's the men's pack, and there's Craig Alexander on the right who has come back and made up ground and passes Matt Reed on the left to take over second place. Simon Lessing and Simon Whitfield aren't too far behind either. Potts, Alexander, and Reed, one, two, three for the men. And there's Floridian Slayer McClarty still holding on to her lead in the women's race. She's been here before. Last year, she was first out of the water. But remember, the swim is her best discipline. It's going to be interesting to see how she does on the bike and the run. There's Laura Bennett in second place. Well, not anymore. Becky Lavelle passes her and moves into second place. And for Sarah McClarty, you don't want to see Becky Lavelle and Laura Bennett in your rearview mirror. For Becky, this is her fifth try at Alcatraz. She has finished second, third, fourth, and fifth. Will this be the day she grabs the brass ring? Meanwhile, the battle for second place in the men's competition rages on as Matt Reed once again passes Craig Alexander and moves into second place. And Todd, this race isn't so much about how strong you are going up the hills. It's what kind of risks you're willing to take going down them. There is your leader, Andy Potts. When we come back, the conclusion of the bike, plus the eight-mile run still ahead. Stay with us. Alcatraz is in the background. That means once again, we're here for the Accenture Escape from Alcatraz Triathlon. We're here to recreate a climate neutral zone. Diana with Cliff Bar, would you please explain to me climate neutral zone? Well, climate neutral means that Cliff Bar has purchased enough renewable wind energy credits to offset the harmful CO2 emissions from burning fossil fuels. And fossil fuels are the most significant contributor to global warming. Why is Cliff Bar's role in protecting the environment important to you? Well, being a triathlete, what I eat is extremely important to me, and it, it helps knowing that Cliff Bar uses pesticide and chemical-free organic ingredients. And the fact that organic farming uses half the fossil fuels as conventional farming means that the air and water we train and compete in is cleaner. And what Cliff Bar is doing in their own backyard is truly unique. Using renewable wind energy, we make this environment a place where our kids can play forever. Cliff Bar, high impact on performance, low impact on environment, protecting the places we love to play. And we welcome you back to the Accenture Escape from Alcatraz Triathlon. Todd Harris along with Mike Adamley. The masses are making their way out of the transition area to start their 18-mile bike ride. Meanwhile, up ahead, men's leader Andy Potts as company. And it's Matt Reed who has been making up ground ever since starting on the bike. It looks like, Mike, it's only a matter of time before he's going to pass Potts. Is there anything Andy can do about this? Andy definitely feels Matt right behind him, breathing down his neck, but this might be by design because Andy knows that so often in the sport of triathlon, races are won and lost in the run. There's still an eight mile run to go, and Andy can still track down Matt Reed. That's not his specialty. Meanwhile, look at this. Becky Lavelle has caught Sarah McClarty and now makes the pass. So very similar in the men's situation. McClarty lets her go. Is she thinking the same thing? I doubt it. McClarty's known as a swimmer. Her bike and her run are still works in progress. Meanwhile, the men's leader is Matt Reed. We saw him moments ago making the pass on Andy Potts and through to San Francisco, turn the corner and you've got a hill staring you in the face, but his form looks fantastic. Moving back in the pack and we've got a battle for fifth place. There's Simon Lessing on the right. Six-time World Cup champion Greg Bennett is also there. 2000 Olympic triathlon gold medalist Simon Whitfield is there as well. Hunter Kemper right behind Simon and Whitfield on the left, passing Kemper and Bennett now. So this is the battle for fifth place in the men's competition. Sitting in fourth by himself for now is Craig Alexander. And as we move forward, it's New Zealand's Hamish Carter up ahead of the pack. He is in third place, but they are starting to close in on him. Carter, the reigning Olympic champion, just cresting the hill and looking so fluid. What people forget about this race, it's an all-out sprint. We can see Becky LaBelle doing the same thing, really pouring it on. She is building her lead over second place, Sarah McClarty. The lead is now one minute and 20 seconds. It will be a long day for Sarah McClarty as she now has to try and track down Becky LaBelle. And it's not going to be easy for Matt Reed either. He's on his way back towards the Marina Green now, coming down out of the Presidio. 
because Andy Potts is on his tail. Both those men are absolutely flying down this hill, throwing caution to the wind tie. Focus is a key with speeds reaching excess of 35 miles an hour as they make their way back down to Marina Green and get ready for the run. Becky Lavelle knows that if she can just avoid any disasters here, meaning a fall or flat tire, this might be her year after coming in second, third, fourth, and fifth place in this race. The other thing she has going for a lot of friends and family on the course, cheering her on. And here comes men's leader Matt Reed down Marina Boulevard along the Marina Greens, almost in the transition area. But right behind him, Andy Pott not giving up. He's only about 25 seconds back now. Matt Reed heading to the transition area. This transition is going to be quick and it's going to be key. Matt Reed, the first man into the bike transition area, the tallest man in the sport at six feet four inches tall. But somewhere lurking in the back of his mind is a bit of self-doubt. The run is not what he does best. He's gotten better over the years, but it's not his strong suit. Andy Potts now in the transition area. And Mike, this transition much easier than the swim to run. No wetsuit to lose. They are already unclipped from their shoes. It's just the addition of the running shoes and lose the helmet. Throw on the shades, the race is on. Now comes the rest of the men's field. There's Greg Bennett and Craig Alexander. Hunter Kemper right behind him. Last year's champion here at Alcatraz. There's Simon Whitfield and there's Simon Lessing. Craig Alexander now out. And Simon Whitfield in hot pursuit. So the men's race is getting interesting as Matt Reed heads to the end of the Marina Green and on to Chrissy Field. Now about 40 seconds back, Andy Pott can't even see Matt Reed. Will he ever see him again during this race? We'll find out very soon. The Accenture Escape from Alcatraz Triathlon is a great fit uh, for our company. Accenture is in the business of helping our clients achieve world-class business performance. As part of Accenture's sponsorship of this event, uh, we have designed and implemented the Accenture Triathlon Alert System that allows athletes and spectators to track the progress of a given athlete as they move through the race. A signal is transmitted via a cell phone or via PDA or home computer and you can see exactly the progress that the athlete's making. For instance, you can see your time at the start and at the end of the sand ladder so you can see exactly how you're doing at that critical element. A new feature uh, of our system this year is that we're going to have a live streaming video from the finish line. So you'll be able to see real time the, uh, the finishers as they cross. We think the athletes will really enjoy this. This is an opportunity for them to uh, see themselves in their moment of glory. It's our hope at Accenture that we continue to keep this race on the cutting edge of innovation and make it the best possible event we can for the athletes, complementing the fantastic course and the scenery here in San Francisco. Back at the 2006 version of the Accenture Escape from Alcatraz Triathlon, that's the Golden Gate Bridge poking out of the fog here in San Francisco. Down the fog, Becky Lavelle is approaching the bike to run transition, already with a leg off the bike. Behind her, by about two minutes and 40 seconds, is the woman who led after the swim, Sarah McClarty. She's motoring her way into the bike to run transition area. Becky Lavelle, the current women's leader, looking for her first victory.